Hi, this is Jana Ibrahim's video series on bipolar junction transistor. In this video, we will discuss about BJT biasing circuit. We already know in our previous discussion of BJT DC load line that in order to design a linear amplifier, we must keep the transistor in active mode and establish a midpoint bias where the Q point is centered on the DC load line while coupling the time varying signal AC signal to the base. An example shown here is a BJT inverter circuit. This circuit can be used to amplify a delta V in or the time varying signal or also known as small signal AC. The circuit is biased in forward active region using VBB and Q point is shown on the voltage transfer characteristic graph. Note that a change in the input signal will be manifested at the output voltage and if the magnitude of the voltage transfer characteristic is more than 1 or unity, the time varying output signal will be larger than the input which means the input has been amplified. The circuit must be biased at the center to the active region in order to get the desired output signal where the same output replicate the shape of the input signal. When improper biasing is used where the Q point is near the saturation region, we can see that the input signal is on its positive cycle and the transistor will remain biased in saturation and therefore the output voltage does not change. Meanwhile, during the negative cycle, it is biased in active region so a half sinusoidal output region is produced, hence it does not replicate the input signal. However, this circuit shown is impractical because the signal source is not connected to ground due to the DC source and there are situations that do not require a DC-based current IB flowing through the signal source. Hence, there is a need to learn alternative biasing techniques that resulted in desired biasing characteristic. In this video, we will discuss three types of biasing circuits. First, fixed bias or single base resistor biasing. Second, biasing using collector to base feedback resistor. And third, voltage divider biasing circuit. The simplest type of transistor biasing is base bias or fixed bias. As shown in the figure, there is a single DC power supply and the IBQ is established through the resistor RB. No resistor is located at the emitter. The term fixed bias stems from the fact that IB will not vary significantly from one transistor to another. Note that in this circuit, the coupling capacitor acts as an open circuit in DC and hence isolates the AC signal source from the DC base current. Typically, the coupling capacitor is in the range of 1 to 10 microfarad. In this circuit, the current enters the circuit from VCC and splits between the base through RB and collector through RC terminals. The sum of the currents then exits the transistor emitter and returns to ground. Let's try one design example. In this question, we are required to find RB and RC with the given values. The circuit must be biased with 12 volt with Q point of ICQ equal to 1 mA and VCEQ equal to 6 volt using beta equal to 100. Then, using the RB and RC results, determine the Q point if the beta value is between 50 to 150. To solve this, we can start from the Q point ICQ and VCEQ. We can calculate RC. Here, 
we can see that the RC is equal to 6 kilo ohm. Then, we can calculate the IBQ using the relationship of ICQ over beta. And from there, we can solve the BE loop and calculate the RB value. The RB value is VCC minus VBE over IBQ and it is equal to 1.13 mega ohm. Next, we need to determine the IBQ of the circuit for beta ranging from 50 to 150 and here are the results. Then, we can plot the DC load line and find the Q points for that beta ranging from 50 to 150. In this example, the variation of beta will affect the location of Q point on the DC load line, which means the Q point is not stabilized against beta. As the beta changes, the Q point varies significantly. The feedback bias circuit is constructed so that the collector voltage VC has a direct effect on the base voltage VB. The term feedback is used to describe a circuit connection that feeds a portion of the output voltage or current to the input, that is, to control the circuit's operating characteristic. Here, the feedback connection reduces the effects of variation in beta half on the Q point values. In this figure, the collector feedback by circuit obtains its Q point stability by connecting the base resistor directly to the collector of the transistor. The circuit looks quite similar to the base resistor or fixed by circuit, except that the path of IB includes the resistor RC. Let's analyze the circuit. By writing KVL for the base loop, VCC is equal to VRC plus VRB plus VBE and this is equal to IC times RC plus IB times RB plus VBE. If we rearrange for IB, it is equal to VCC minus VBE over RB plus beta RC. And when we write the KVL for the collector loop, it is equal to VCE equal to VCC minus ICRC. The collector feedback bias is relatively stable against change in beta because the IB and beta are inversely related in the circuit. As beta increases, IB decreases and vice versa. This is very useful when considering the response on amplifier due to the increasing of temperature during operation. When temperature increases, IC increases and this will cause the beta to increase. But since in the previous equation, IB is inversely related to beta, therefore, in response to the increase in beta, IB decreases and this will offset the increase of IC. Let's try one design example. In this example, we are required to find RB and RC such that IE equal to 1 mA, VCE equal to 2.3 V, VCC equal to 10 V, VBE is equal to 0 0.7 and beta is equal to 100. From the circuit, when we minus VB from VC, over RB, it is equal to IB, but VC is equal to VCE, and VB is equal to VBE, and this is equal to 0 0.7. So, the equation 2.3 minus 0 0.7 over RB will be equal to IE over beta plus 1. And from there, we can get RB equal to 161.6 kilo ohm. Now we go to the CE loop. VCC minus VC over RC is equivalent to IE and we know that VC is equal to VCE. Therefore, we can get RC is equal to 7.7 .7 kilo ohm. The voltage divider is by far the most commonly used pricing scheme 
The figure shows that the circuit is similar in the form of fixed biasing circuit but it has an additional R2 resistor between the base and ground and RE is added at the emitter terminal. The AC signal is still coupled to the base of the transistor through the coupling capacitor. The modifications results in a biasing that give ICQ and VCEQ that are relatively stable against beta variation. Note that in DC, the coupling capacitor acts as an open circuit. Therefore, the combination of R1, R2 and VCC forms a voltage divider at the base loop of the transistor. The circuit can easily be analyzed by forming a Thevenin equivalent circuit for the base loop. The equivalent Thevenin voltage is VTH is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times VCC. And the equivalent Thevenin resistance is R1 in parallel with R2. Then, by applying the KVL at the BE loop, we obtain VTH is equal to IBQ times RTH plus VBE plus IERE. And then, by assuming that the transistor is operating at the forward active mode, IEQ will be equal to beta plus 1 IBQ. Rearranging the KVL, we can find IBQ is equal to VTH minus VBE over RTH plus 1 plus beta times RE. Next, we solve the CE loop which is quite straightforward. By writing the KVL for CE loop is VCC minus IC times RC minus VCEQ minus IE times RE equal to zero. And uh, we can substitute IE with beta plus 1 IB or we can just straight away find the ICQ which is equal to VCC minus VCEQ minus IERE over RC. That's end our discussion on BJT biasing circuits.